Hi, and we are live. Um, today I'd like to talk about uh, some videos that I saw on YouTube and, and dedicate this um, this episode to Sean Carroll. Um, I have not read any books by him, but I've started watching a lot of YouTube videos and it was mind-blowing. He's a very He's very good at explaining things for amateurs and for people that have never studied physics um, or, you know, just know like elementary physics. So Sean Michael Carroll, he's a cosmologist and a physics professor specializing in dark energy and general relativity. He's a research professor in the Department of Physics in the California Institute of Technology. And that's the same uh, uh, Caltech where Richard Feynman was teaching. In fact, he's sharing the same desk um, that Richard Feynman was sitting in. And um, he, uh, I watched his, um, a uh, few of his uh, YouTube videos, and I'm still learning, but one of the things that was uh, mind-blowing for me, I guess whenever I watch, like, all these documentaries about um, space and time and our universe and cosmology and physics and um, science, popular science, they always say that atom is has nucleus, electron, and most of it is like empty space. Um, you know, so if you look at, at the, the nucleus and where the electron is, so it's all empty space. In fact, if you combine, like, let's say, the Empire State Building, all the matter that actually inside of Empire Building, inside of Empire State Building, it would be like a grain of rice. Where Sean Carroll, he says that's not really true. So scientists talk about it like this is an empty space, but it's not really an empty space. Atom is more like a cloud. And when you look at it, it's actually vibrating fields. So it's not an empty space. And it's contrary to the popular belief and contrary to all the documentaries um, of popular science. It's not an empty space. Actually, there are no particles. It's all just fields. And we talk about particles because it's easier to to describe things that way and also when we observe something it looks like then we could say oh here's an electron and we found him at this space and time right here and so once you observe it you could see where the electron is at certain place and time but if you don't observe it it's just a cloud and it, the electron could be anywhere and it's a vibrating field so it's not true um, atoms are not empty space which is very, very interesting, and that everything is just like fields. It's actually not particles, but it's fields, um, vibrating fields. He talked about Higgs particle. It was discovered finally in 2012, um, thanks to Collider in Geneva. LHC Collider, uh, LHC Collider, I think it's called. Sorry, I got to look this up because I don't want to be wrong. Oh, yes, Large Hadron Collider um, at CERN in Geneva. So that, the Higgs particle boson, the Higgs boson was discovered. And that's, again, just like a field, but if it interacts with other particles and makes them heavier. And, but it's also like he's very good about explaining um, time travel and if it's possible I actually read a few books about time travel and Scotty beam me up and how you could travel and paradoxes and everything well he says that you cannot really travel back in time and or if you could you can't change uh, you can't change the past because if you even if according to Einstein you you somehow you bend the space so much that even if you live your normal life, but you bend the space, you come back to the same kind of trajectory and boom, you're going to be like a going second time around of your first trajectory and you kind of like sort of in this loop. Um, theoretically, you could do that. You still, it's more going to be like alternative universe. It's not going to be the same. You can't go back and kill your mother and your father and not be born because it already happened. So... You can't do that, but you could travel sort of in the future because 
time is not the same according to Einstein and we know it's true because we tested it in even airplanes if you put like atomic clock in the airplane and you leave a person on earth and then the airplane is going to be constantly circling um, uh, the the earth uh, the time on the airplane atomic uh, clock will be a little bit slower so if you move even faster, if you move closer to the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers per second, which is crazy, you are going to be pretty much, the time is going to be very slow for you. It's not going to be the same. So you can come back to Earth and I'll be 100 years old and you'll be still 18. And let's say we both were 18. You left. I'm 100. You were 18. So kind of like you went into the future because... You're still 18 and now you see me when I'm 100? It, it's confusing. So that's the time travel. Um, reassembling and reassembling particles sort of it's not really possible according to Einstein because of space and time. I don't understand it again. And um, so that was interesting and he's very good explaining at... So nothing can move uh, faster than the speed of light. Uh, because it's just a law, you know, and there was some, one person asked, well, what about the Big Bang? When the universe started, um, things were moving faster. Than, no, they weren't. It's just, if you, if let's say I am here and you're really far away, it's like a Big Bang, like imagine the balloon. So everything just, just moves away from each other. But if I'm here and a distant, distant, uh, uh, planet is moving, it would appear that it moves faster, but it's not really, it's just the whole space and time is expanding. So no, nothing can move faster than the speed of light. And also everyone has kind of like, because you cannot move faster than the speed of light, you're in your cone of light because you cannot sort of step out. So whatever you, whatever you are, you know, when we say observable universe, it means in that cone everything that we can see because there are things that we cannot see because the light hasn't reached us. So the light hasn't traveled here. So this is very interesting because there are things that we don't know, we don't see because they're not in our cone. Um, and according to um, Einstein, the black hole can actually bend our cone. Um, so that's the only thing that can bend our cone of time and sort of then we come to this point of singularity where time and space i mean there's nothing there it's just like stands i mean time and space uh, disappear or um, cease to exist which is very very confusing so i highly recommend sean m carroll um uh, please check out the videos um i'm gonna post in the in the in the and below but it's interesting um like i said nothing in there's no empty space in the atom it's just vibrating fields and that's something that i thought was very very interesting um he's also he did also speak up against the secret and all the deepak chopra because obviously you know the quantum physics uh deepak chopra and all the new age people they grab onto that and they're like oh you know two particles in different spaces that means that everything you think, you know, and, and it's, it's not, we, we don't know where the particle is unless we observe it. That means everything you think materializes and that you can will thing and wish things with your thoughts. That's not true. You cannot wish and will things with your thoughts. Um, and I watched another iPod, um, uh, podcast by Joe Rogan, where he says that, um, even if you study all the successful people and you do exactly as they do, it's still not going to be the same. You, 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 because you're not them. You can't copy. It's not going to be the same result. There's luck. There's hard work. There's obviously discipline. There's, it's a combination of things, all these things that equal to success. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.